Frank's Red Hot is the perfect blend of flavor and heat. So you can use an entire bottle to make recipes like buffalo chicken dip or buffalo nachos. Or even things that don't start with buffalo. Frank's Red Hot. I put that shit on everything. It's the worst day of the year, Craig. Well, it's almost the worst day of the year. Well, you know, it's it's crazy to me, and I, you know, because we have this like section of our fan base that only pays attention to this game, which is yeah. in, like literal insanity. Yeah, and they get all pumped up this week. So there's this like section of the Cougs that get really pumped up, and then they want us to change our offense to something completely different <laughs> in one week because like this is the only game that matters, and they would probably yeah. trade all the success we've had in the last four years or since 2015. Uh, just for a win over the the Huskies, but um, so no, yeah, this 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 is, is a shitty. Like I I dreaded wrote, dreaded writing my preview, um, because I feel like everything I say rings hollow, and like I just uh, man, I just I don't look forward to this. No. Um, it's it makes me sad and angry <laughs> that we end our season with this every single yeah. year. That's that's a hell of a way to start a podcast, right? Oh yeah! Welcome to podcast versus everyone. <laughs> I'm Craig Powers. With me is Jeff Newser. Uh, yeah, and this, if, you've, if this, you've come here for encouragement, you've come to the wrong place. This is your. <laughs> well, there's a big Apple event happening this weekend, Jeff. That is true. Apple related event. That's right. The release Cosmic of the Crisp. Cosmic Crisp on Sunday. Hell yeah, I want some of that. Yeah, I never did connect with uh, Britton Ransford uh, last weekend. He said he had some, and then I, I never, never was able to find him. I was, I was hoping to get a little, little sneak peek, little sneak test. So, but, um, unfortunately, we won't be discussing that. We'll be discussing the Apple yeah. Cup, the other Apple related event yeah. on Black Friday. I'll have, to, I'll have to save my Apple, my Cosmic Crisp review for. Uh, Next week's episode, since we won't won't be talking about the game, right? Or... Yeah, well, yeah, that'll be a short, <laughs> short thing. Um, we are beaten down, Craig. We are beaten down. Yeah, it's been it's been eighty four years. Or Feels like it. It's been seven years uh, since the Cougs have won an Apple Cup, and that was a miraculous win. And <laughs> That's then what's it was, so amazing. And then it was it. four years before that, and that yeah. was a mirac- miraculous win. So, well, uh, and what's bananas about it is so like you, you were in school at a time when like winning the Apple Cup was like a regular thing. Yeah, except we've lost the one that actually mattered. But. Yeah, but still, it was like you know there was a time there where it was like you know what I know all of I know what the history says. I know the history says we've you know lost a gazillion times, but this is a different era now. We right, are winning yeah. like. I don't know, at least every other year, something like that. I mean, we're going to win, you know, on average one out of every two. It's more going to be more of a 50, 50 thing. And then, uh, and then it wasn't, <laughs> it was no longer a 50, 50 thing. It was no longer as so many of our fans like to say a rivalry. Anything can happen in a rivalry. Yeah. It just doesn't feel like that anymore. Yeah, anything can happen ranging from a two touchdown loss to a four touchdown loss. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. how it feels. It's really frustrating this year cause, because the Huskies just aren't as dominant as they've been. No. Because even, even uh, especially defensively, so they shouldn't be as scary. And then their offense has sputtered for two weeks. So it's just – but you still just can't shake that feeling that since, since Peterson has taken over at UW – like this game has not been close. Um, it was close for a while. Like it was close headed into the fourth quarter last year, but it was basically UW then just uh, had a couple drives that <laughs> iced it. Right. And uh, yeah, so it's um, iced it literally. Um, literally. But yeah, so I don't know. This year, hey, we got we got some got some good weather. It's a midday game. There's not going to be any fucking snow. Yeah, because we're in Seattle and not Pullman. Um, but also the problem is we're in Seattle and not Pullman. That is um, part of the problem. Yeah, uh, the uh, uh, SP Plus has uh, the Huskies favored by eight. Um, the Vegas has them favored by a touchdown or so. 
Um, that feels that feels about right. Like if you're just objectively analyzing the game, um, but then we all just know that something horrible could happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's you know uh, you look at the slow starts and uh, Theo Lawson wrote an article about it this week. Just they've just been buried um, often. You know, last week they weren't buried early. But last year they weren't buried early, but. Uh, the years before that, they were just getting buried early. By by halftime, the game was gen- generally over, right? Right. Um, and and it, in in the case of like 2016 and 2014, it was over in the first quarter. Uh, but yeah, it's just uh, it, it's just frustrating. Um, that's it, it, it's just annoying to have to come to this every week, every every year and uh let's but let's 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 look at let's try to objectively <laughs> try to be objective <laughs> analyze these that's i did that on, i did that on my on my preview yeah um, i tried to objectively analyze things but then i had these caveats throughout so that's probably what i'm gonna do here um yeah so we'll start with the husky offense uh Overall, pretty solid, but the last two weeks have been a trash fire, you know, like playing the two, like the two defenses in the conference that might actually be worse than WSU's um, and scoring 19 points and 13, 14 points. And Eason having his two worst games of the year Yep, in the last two games. Uh, he's thrown eight picks. Three of them came in the last two games. Another two came against Utah a couple weeks ago. But I don't think I don't trust anything. Like they actually like did fairly well against Utah's yep. uh, defense. So like that's when that's probably why their defense offense is pretty highly rated. But so that always makes you worry because that they're they're bad offensive games. Um, aside from Cal, have been on the road. Right. Um. So it's it's just like is Easton going to be better? Um, one thing that we both know is he, from watching him, is he is awful under pressure. Yep. And uh, UW doesn't have that great of an offensive line. They haven't given given up a lot of sacks, but they feel like they give up a lot of pressure. And Eason throws it away a lot, and not always in the greatest spots. But do you think that do you think our our defensive front can create that pressure to? make him uncomfortable to make those bad throws, overthrows, interceptions, uh, stupid running backwards sacks. Like, do, do we have that? Do, can we do that? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sure that, you know, that sounds terrible, but, um, you know, I mean, what evidence do we have that, that you know, these guys can generate a lot of pressure? Um, you know, they just, they haven't really done it with, with any regularity this year. So, you know, they, they've had moments, you know, I mean, there were some moments, uh, early against Utah where they did it. Um, but you know, it's just, it's been pretty rare. Um, you know, they didn't get a lot of pressure on Luton last weekend. Um, so yeah, I, you know, unless they've got some, uh, you know, creative, you know, blitzing, stunting scheme or whatever that they've been holding off and haven't been putting on film just, you know, to hold for Washington. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't think it's out there. The only thing that gives me a little bit of hope was, you know, you mentioned that, you know, Colorado's defense is pretty terrible. Um, you know, they were able to get some. No, quite a lot. Yeah. So maybe, I don't know, you know, I mean, it's, and again, you know, the home road thing, um, you know, the Washington's tended to look a little bit different at home than they have on the road. You know, I mean, they scored, uh, you know, 30 plus points against Oregon's defense at home. Um, and, and you mentioned it's been different lately. So, I mean, I don't, I don't really know that there's anything, at least from what I could tell, uh, to pinpoint in terms of why maybe they're not as productive right now as they have been. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't have a lot of faith. I mean, I, I mean, here's what I know. Every offense looks good against us. Like, yeah. With the Stanford, exception of Colorado is the only one. Yeah, in, and that was in a driving rainstorm, you know, which I, I know that, you know, we had to play in the rainstorm too. But, um, you know, I think just like last year's Apple Cup, it, it certainly seemed like the weather was affecting Colorado a bit more than it was um, affecting us, which, you know, may have to do with quality of players and Anthony Gordon and all that stuff. But still, um, you know, I, I think that 
absent those kinds of circumstances, I, I, I don't really imagine that, um, you know, we're going to be able to do a whole lot to, to impede them, which is scary because, uh, you know, we'll talk about our offense in a sec, but, you know, I tend to like matchups a lot better where um, it's, you know, their good offense against our bad defense or, and, and our good offense against their bad defense, because then I feel like, you know, we can win a shootout um, games where we've, you know, faced a bad offense against a good defense. Um, you know, their offense is going to get right. And, and it's a big question mark as to whether our offense will do, but anyway, I'm probably getting ahead of myself. So, yeah. Um, so um, I do think UW's going to run the ball a lot. Yep. They have historically in this game done that. Um, they don't have Miles Gaskin, so and Ahmed is not the the runner that Gaskin is. Um, they don't use him twenty five times a game like they use Gaskin. Um, they have, but they don't not recently as much. Um, they have a they have a short yardage back, and that's part of it. And uh, Richard Newton, he'll carry the ball, but uh, Ahmed is he's he's good, like five and a half a rush. Um, he's, he's has an 89 yard touchdown this year. So, you know, he's, he can be explosive and, and we saw, um, uh, last game, uh, uh, the Beavers running backs hadn't been particularly explosive, but against, uh, against WSU's defense, they busted out for some big ones, uh, per particular Jamar Jefferson, who was the least, the less explosive of the two had a, had some big plays, um, like right early, right, right off the bat had a 50 yard touchdown run. Um, so that just seems like, uh, it seems like these guys are inevitable to give up on. Um, they do at times can, it, it's, it's just going to be, if UW's going to run the ball that much, what, what you got to do is hope like the last drive against Oregon state, you just get a couple stops against the run and then force, force, uh, the quarterback to make a play on third down and hope he doesn't. Um, and, and that's. That's that's what that that's what we're we're in with this defense. We know what we have. Like it's it's bad. <laughs> Just like hoping it, for a miracle. Yeah. Um, one thing that where the miracle could come is they the Huskies have been pretty bad in the red zone, uh, or I guess below average in the red zone and below average in scoring opportunities. They're they don't they don't convert that well. Um, the Cougs are above average defensively in both those areas. So. If somehow the Cougs can not give up those big plays to the running backs, give up those big plays in the passing game, uh, there's a chance that they can, you know, uh, bend a bit. Um, so that's what you hope for. Hope for they they can bend enough to kind of keep the keep uh, keep the score within striking distance. Hope they can get to Eason enough to maybe have him throw a pick. Uh, he's maybe throw a pick six. Even he seems to be um, up for those. Um, so yeah, you're just you just gotta hope for stuff like that. Um, hope that we can get some of the crazy plays um, our way once in a while in an Apple Cup, which we know that never happens. But um, yeah, just hope. Hopefully, uh, Eason being a uh, you know a guy from Washington maybe takes takes a little more pressure on him in this game. Uh, maybe that that causes him to uh, play a little tight. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't. I, it I don't know it's 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 like pre when you preview our defense against any offense it's just like well they'll probably make them look better than they actually are so it's like what are you what are you gonna do yeah they'll definitely make them look better than they actually are and Ahmed is pretty terrifying uh, just because he's so explosive um, all it takes is you know a bad angle and and we saw plenty of those last weekend um, it, it was kind of funny watching. Uh, uh, what watch this, you know, prolonged highlight package on YouTube the other day. And, uh, you know, I saw some things I hadn't seen from my seat <laughs> when I was at the game. And, uh, some of those long runs were just like breathtakingly bad in terms of, you know, guys being in the right spot, you know, with their run fits versus, you know, also guys, uh, you know, taking the right angle safeties, taking the right angle on a, I mean, just, Yeah. Absolutely brutal. And we haven't even talked about Hunter Bryant yet and, and what a ridiculous mismatch he's going to be because, um, you know, after watching Oregon State's tight ends work us to death last weekend, now we get, you know, the best tight end, uh, certainly in the Pac-12 and, and maybe even in the country. So that should be exciting. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, basically, uh, 
I mean, essentially Eason's favorite target. Uh, Which he ca- should be because he's awesome. Fuller catches a couple more, but um, yeah, uh, that's yeah. We saw just Oregon State just throw the ball up, you know, and, right? And uh, he's not I mean, as- twice. Twice they got touchdowns from just throwing the ball up, and you know their big tight end boxing somebody out, basically. Yeah, Bryant's not as tall as that guy, but probably stronger and. And uh, certainly much more athletic. more athletic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's 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 pretty scary. Uh, he surprisingly only has three touchdowns this year, um, but I guess Easton's only thrown twenty one. So yeah, that's, which is kind of surprising. Um, it's kind of surprising how highly their offense is rated given how little they've scored touchdowns. Um, but yeah, that doesn't matter. Uh, they don't use their running backs in passing very much. So they they use a tight end. That's what they use, uh, and a, a couple of tight ends, uh, Otten as well. Um, Fuller is shaky and speedy. Uh, definitely not the player that some of their receivers have been, um, but definitely has a uh, you know he can make a play. Yeah, uh, just not as consistently as maybe some of the guys they've had. In the they past. drop a lot of balls. You yeah, know, their receivers do. drop a lot of balls. Well, I think part of that is Eason too. He, Might be. Like, if you, 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 he puts a lot of heat on like short passes. Yes, he like, does. Yeah, he, he throws I, a gorgeous ball. I mean, he, yeah, he'll whiz it in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, their their receivers just aren't as scary as you know as they typically have been. Right. You know, where you just felt like, oh man, this is this is such a mismatch. You know, and, and Hunter Bryant's a mismatch, but I'm not sure, you know, any of their other receivers. Um, you know, are in, in the same way that, that they have been in the past. I, I think that, you know, our secondary, if it can kind of, you know, hold together, I, I think they do have a chance of maybe, you know, again, not, not necessarily shutting down, but, um, you know, at the very least maybe hanging around. I mean, I, I think we should be encouraged maybe by what Marcus Strong did last weekend against Isaiah Hodgins. Absolutely. Um, you know, I don't know if that means he just draws, you know, an assignment against Fuller or kind of how that works, but, um, but I know that, uh, they, they, they may be, the secondary maybe showed a little bit better last weekend than it had, um, the tight ends, you know, a lot of that's on, uh, you know, just kind of watching the replay, you know, it seemed like a lot of that was on, you know, whoever was playing nickel and that was Armani Marsh quite a bit. Um, and, and, you know, guys playing safety, you know, Skylar Thomas. So, um, I think it's going to be largely on those guys to, um, you know, to play a little bit better and and not give up uh, those explosive plays and, you know, stay sound when, when play action happens because, you know, Washington's going to try and turn you in 13 different directions. And um, it's also pretty much a guarantee that Washington's going to score on a trick play. So uh, we should probably be ready for that. Yeah, too. Coach Pete loves that. Yep, they'll, they'll get one. They'll, they'll definitely get one. Um, so, but just spot them those seven points and – Maybe we can win the rest of it. And another, another seven, another seven. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Like, the, the defense is going to give up points. I, that's I, the, this is not a narrative that is any different than any other game. Um, you just hope that uh, they don't like they. I, I feel like they shouldn't get shredded like against Oregon State, but you just you just never know, man. Yeah. Um, I mean, Oregon State's offense at this point is probably better than Washington's offense, but. Yeah, obviously their offense got shut down by Washington's defense, but um hey, let's not talk about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're so positive. Yeah. Um people listening to this are going to be like, "Why do we listen to this crap show?" Like they're just so negative. Well, usually we're pretty positive. That's that just, is uh, true. This is this is the one. This this is the one where we reserve just all of that, just all of it. And and you know why? I mean, like I, I don't know. Maybe there are some people out there listening that are like this, but it's like the reason why we're so negative is because we were so positive for so long, and then just at some point you break and you're just like, I I don't believe it will ever happen again unless it like actually happens, and I'm not gonna allow myself to think it'll happen until it actually happens. You know. Well, yeah, and 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 our listeners who are who are regular listeners and who are invested every week. I mean, it, it gets very hard to, you know, you you don't want to let this game ruin your like yeah. positive seasons. Like, yeah, 
Um, you know, I don't want to let this game ruin the memory of the Oregon State game and the Stanford game and how we won those two games to get the bowl eligibility. Yeah. You know, I don't. I I don't want that ruin. I don't. I don't. I didn't. I don't. I didn't want to let. You know. I mean, the thing is, like the last three years, uh, this game has stopped us from going to the Pac-12 championship and stopped us with a chance for a chance at the Rose Bowl. Right. Um, when we were right in line for it just yep. needed to win this game and that's that that is part of what has beaten us down so much yep. is that we though you can't help but be invested in those ones i mean i don't know i don't know like by last year i don't know about you but i was just like yeah like i know we're 10 and 1 and i'm just like i'm not going to expect anything in 2017 i i didn't expect it, but but 2016 when we had them at home and but they were ranked four that year or five that year. So it was kind of rough, but I don't know. Like when you, when you go through three straight years of, if you just beat them, you go to the PAC 12 t- title game with a shot at the Rose bowl. Yep. And then it, you just, there's in none of like, there's just, I mean, there was a, sh- like it was like 15, 10 in the fourth quarter last year. So there, or whatever it was. Um, so it was, there was a, it was there. There was a chance. I think the kooks had the ball down five, around midfield and just couldn't get it done yeah. um, in the snowstorm. But, it, but, but, uh, so there was a chance last year, but, um, the offense was just doing so poorly in the second half. It never really did feel like it. Um, I think like you were just hoping you dub would fumble the ball a bunch, like, which is what they did last year, which is makes that all the more frustrating. Um, can we get all those fumbles, uh, today or tomorrow as well? Yeah. <laughs> can, yeah. Can that'd those? be great. Yeah. I would love those like four or five fumbles. Although I will hold, like, if you just want to look back last year, UW definitely fumbled the ball in the first quarter and Peyton Pillar picked it up and was running for a touchdown and they called the guy down Yep. and, and they never reviewed it or anything. Yep. And it, it, like, it still frustrates me because they mm-hmm. ended up seven zero and, uh, but anyways, uh, that's last year. Um, <laughs> th- this year, yeah. Um, I-, I would love for Issa, like if we could just uh, get, just, you don't know, like just get, force Issa into, get Jihad chasing him or something. Get Will Rogers chasing him so that yeah. he just does something stupid. Like throw us one, throw us two, man. Like, or just, you can just make him erratic. Like he, his completion percentage just plummets when he's, yeah. When he's uh, but the thing is, if you leave the pocket clean for him, he yeah. will shred you. He'll pick you because because he has a fucking cannon, and and like he he's a very good clean pocket quarterback, and that's why he's getting NFL looks, is because they look at those throws and they're like Jesus, uh, um, but yeah, but if you just can put pressure on him, he does really dumb shit. Like it's a lot like Browning, but we've never been able to, we, we never were able to really do that to Browning because they were able to keep us at bay with the run game, Yeah, which is what I'm worried for. This offensive line though, is not as good as the oh, past ones. Absolutely. I mean, they'll yeah. probably look amazing. I mean, let's, <laughs> you know, let's, let's not get off topic here. They'll, they'll just, they'll just, they'll just like have superhuman powers for yeah. one day. But I will I will say this. Um their right guard Jackson Kirkland, uh he went out with an injury and that uh against Colorado and that is when their offensive line really started to look yeah. a lot less good. Um cuz I mean they're pretty you know what they've played like this year is definitely below what Husky fans have expected out of them. Um, but they're still like an above average line. Well, they, they very much look like a, like an average to below average line uh, when Kirkland went out. Now, maybe some of that is just um, he's just that good. Maybe some of that is just that the guy coming in is just that bad. Or maybe it was just, hey, the guy coming in is new and fresh and, you know, needed some adjusting. So, I mean, I suppose we'll see which one it is. I, you know, I, I, it's not, Peterson's being a little coy. About Kirkland's status, which leads me to believe that he's probably not going to play. Yeah. Um, so if he doesn't, I, I think that's that's a really good sign. And and again, maybe you know maybe you can take advantage of some of that with some stunts and some twists and um, some blitzes that that maybe confuse somebody that uh, you know maybe isn't isn't nearly as strong. So. Yeah, I, 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 that's the one thing I hope for. You know, maybe you get a, you know, a superhuman game out of somebody in the middle. You know, like, 
you know, Dallas Hobbs, like he did against, uh, you know, for, for a short time against Utah or, um, you know, maybe, you know, maybe Lamont McDougal decides, you know, this is, it's the dang apple cup and he's going to wreck some people, you know I mean? I, yeah. I don't know, but I kind of forgot he was on the team. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's kind of what we need. You know, we, we really do need, uh, you know, somebody to, to collapse the pocket a little in the middle, make him a little uncomfortable. Um, you know, just really get some people at his feet a little bit at Easton's feet a little bit and, and, and he'll get a little wild and he'll make some bad decisions and catch so. the balls if they hit you in the hands. Yes. That too. Yeah. Do that. If he throws one to you every single time, please. Yeah. I know his, his own receivers can't do it, but you can do it. Yes. Should we break? Yeah, let's break. And then we'll talk offense, which is usually the happier thing, but <sighs> all right. And we're back. What do you this think, is, Craig? Should we run the wishbone this week? Um, yeah, dude, we got to go double tight. Um, you know, I mean, heck, uh, let, let's just, just let's just let's just put Gage Gabrud in and take Anthony Gordon out and just you know because he's a running quarterback and we got to yeah. do something different. We got to. We got to. I mean, you you can't roll with the offense that has. Uh, thrown for 47 touchdown passes this right. year you definitely can't do that no shouldn't do that no i mean but do you, like okay so like i kind of understand to a, a small degree what they're talking about though like do you so i mean obviously not changing the whole offense that's very stupid but it's like you know do, do you ever sit there and think like and not that i'm naive enough to think that they haven't you know, tried to tweak it, haven't tried to put in wrinkles. You know I mean? I'm not, I'm not trying to say that, but it's like, you know, like, uh, you know, last year's probably a decent example. Like th- there, ha- there should have come a point where it was like, yo, we, yeah, we cannot, cannot throw, throw the, the ball. ball. Like I, I know we're the air raid and I know that's what we do and everything else, but, but you like, cannot see five feet in front yeah, of you. I mean, for God's sakes, like, you know, you could see that Minshew was turning down throws. Like you could see that he was throws that he would have made, you know, 10 times out of 10 all year long. You know, he's turning them down because he can't make the throw. It, you know, it's too cold. It's too wet. It's, you know, everything else. And and, and so he's turning down these throws. It's like, it's like, you know, at some point you just decide like what you have to do to win a game. So anyway, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, there's, uh, you know, some sort of wholesale changes, but, um, you know, I, I, I am curious, you know, what, if anything, um, you know, happens differently or could be done differently, uh, to try and take advantage of Washington, or if it's just as simple and, and I'm sure you're going to talk about this of, you know, maybe they're just not quite as talented as they have been. And maybe that's our best, uh, our best hope. Well, yeah, in previous years, you know, people call for it for you to run and do whatever, but you'd have had some dogs in the middle. Um, yeah. that even when we did run and like, didn't go very well. Um, it would last year it was going better in the snow. We just like in the few times they did it, but you, you know, you could be frustrated, like just try it a few, try it a little more. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, this definitely is, uh, the worst UW defense since, I don't know, 2015 or earlier, maybe I don't like it's, uh, they're, and they don't, they're, they're not like as stacked with talent as they normally are, particularly in the middle, um, the linebackers, you know, um, there's no like Shaq Thompson in there <laughs> like, and, and, you know, there's, you know, Marcus Peters on the outside and those other guys, um, their defensive line isn't what it's been. It definitely you is know, not even, they're close, just yeah. not, you know, they don't have a Vita Vea in there. You know, lifting your center I mean, up and then Vita dropping Vea him at the feet of your quarterback. Us, you yeah, know? Vita Vea gave us nightmares so. um, for years. So, so yeah, like, and there's statistic, there, there's statistical proof to back this up. They, they, the Huskies are 93rd in stuff rate, which means the uh, rate at which they stop a run at or behind the line. Um, so they don't like they're uh, they they're they're passing. Um, their, their passing defense is still the strength of their defense, but I'm, but I'm talking like, it's like in the thirties and forties in terms of like a lot of success rate yards per pass passing success rate. Like it's not like dominant, super dominant, um, passing defense. And then their run defense is definitely probably a little below average. Um, so yeah, like there's not, um, 
Like there, there's this is not like a super scary UW defense, and then this is the best WSU offense that Leach has had. So you're like, if we can't do it this time, then yes, <laughs> Jimmy Lake owns yeah. us, and we yeah. can't like it. Like that's you. Like I think last year, like we're like okay, it snowed, like. We're not ready. Like Gardner Mitchell, like we didn't have Luke. Like Luke Falk was, Jimmy Lake was perfect for uh, stopping Luke Falk, I think. Um, yeah. And then also they had you know Vita Vea and guys like that who just collapsed the middle and sack him. Um, right. But um, but last year you were like, okay, we actually have a guy who's you know quicker on decisions, better on probably the pre snap read, a you know, little elusive, a little more pressure. elusive if there's pressure. Um, but then, you know, that was all thrown, thrown away. But, but this year we have another guy who's, uh, you know, he'll, for, he'll throw the ball downfield. So like, if there's a window, he'll find it. Like he's not, and he, and he also is pretty damn good. He's not like, not like a gardener in terms of scrambling yardage, but man, the way he steps out of sacks is like really impressive. Like yeah. he's, he's still only been sacked 14 times this year. Yeah. And, and people like complain about how he sits there with his feet set, but like, People Gar- compl- people who complain about that are idiots. Yeah, like because Gardner did that too. I don't know if they remember. Like that's like Gardner did the exact same thing, um, and it looked weird when he did it too. It looks weird, I understand, but it's he's he's still moving his head, and and it's part of how he gets rid of the ball so quickly because yeah. he doesn't have to set his feet are already set. He doesn't have to like like he's not moving them around. Like um, so yeah, like that's. It gives me a little like one UW doesn't have the talent anywhere that they usually have on defense. Uh, they're they're still good. Like I'm not saying this is a good defense. It's one of the better defenses we faced all year. Um, probably the only defenses that are better are uh, maybe Cal and Utah. And Utah, yeah. And so, but uh, a little bit worse is Arizona State's defense, <laughs> and they shredded them. So I don't. Yep. So you know, uh, I yeah, it's just. That's why I say like it. This now or never. Like it. Like if we can't, if we can't, like beat Jimmy Lake and Chris Peterson. Like not just not beat them necessarily because we there's that other side of the ball. But if we can't put up points on in this year, right. then it's I just yeah. Then fine. Go like go double tights in the Apple Cup. <laughs> like I yeah. don't give a shit. Like come on. Like yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I do think that it it might work to our advantage to run on early downs uh, a little bit. Yeah. I I think when I think back to the reasons why, you know, they haven't been able to get traction against, you know, UW's defense, I I think really it comes down to, uh, you know, people want them to run, right? People, you know, we need to run more. We need to run more. Well, so the air raid is predicated on, okay, if you're going to run, it's it's okay. We're gonna run when it's hat on hat, and we also maybe you know the way they're aligned gives us some leverage or something, right? right? So, you know, it's you're looking for you're looking for five on five, right? You know, five linemen against five linemen, figuring you know you can you can beat them. Well, like we were having trouble beating them five on four on some alignments. Yeah. Like, like in the like r- you, running the ball. Yeah. Like when you run against five on four and you can't win that, like, like you're toast. You're so toast. If they can, you know, put seven people into coverage every time without even having to think twice about the running game, you're screwed. You're just screwed. You're 100% screwed. And I, I say that because this year, I, I, I think, like you said, you know, if we can't do it this year, this time against this group, um, you know, they should not be able to do that this year. You know, they should not, you know, if it's five on five, if it's hat on hat, we've got leverage, we should be able to run the ball. Um, you know, it's it shouldn't be, you know, five on five and they're hitting our guy, you know, two yards in the backfield. Like that's not that really should not happen this year. So, um, you know, I feel like if we can, you know, get some of that going, uh, if we can make that a legitimate threat, if we can make them think twice about, you know, just automatically, you know, dropping six, seven, eight guys into coverage, um, and, and, you know, putting up alignments that, you know, make it pretty clear that that's what they're going to do. Um, you know, I, I think that will make a massive amount of difference because I think that, 
you know, the secondary was just able to just clog and, and sell out for the pass and without even having to worry about run support. Because you know? the, the front four yeah. could take care of it. I mean, literally four guys could control five. And that that's not the group that they have now. And, um, you know, and in a lot of ways, you know, that wasn't really the group they had last year either until it started to snow. And, you know, I mean, that's, you know, sometimes that happens. I mean, we... You know, I, I maintain I, I will go to my grave, you know, saying that I don't know if we necessarily win that game, but I know that game looks a whole lot different if it doesn't snow. You know, before the snow, you know, Booby and Borgie were really kind of shredding them on the perimeter. Um, you know, I think we had a little bit of a speed advantage uh, with their linebackers and our, our running backs, uh, you know, putting them in space. And of course, there would have been adjustments off of that and adjustments off of the adjustments. Right. But you know, it, it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a, you know, Jimmy Lakes figured out the air raid, you know, like I like to tell people, well, if he had, then wouldn't everybody do it? Like, like what's, what's the yeah. thing that he's got that nobody else does? Or what's the thing that Cal has that nobody else does? Or what's the thing that Utah has that nobody else does? Well, it's like, I mean, come on, like Utah, Utah did what Washington's done for years, which is, they blew you up know, the middle. Yeah. I mean, kill us with four linemen and, and drop everybody else and just clog those passing lanes like crazy. Now, I think some of that was, we didn't play very well. I think Cal was the same way. We just, we were not very tough. Um, we're going to have to be tougher in this game than we have um, against any tough defense uh, that we've played this year. We, we really are. And that's, that's going to be the big thing. Are, are the receivers, you know, tough enough to, uh, you know, to fight, to get open, to fight, to get off the line uh, because UW has made a habit out of the last few years out of bullying us yep. and, you know, grabbing and clutching and, um, you know, really just physically manhandling us. Are we going to allow that to happen again this year? Or are we going to actually fight back and, and, you know, get in their face a little bit? Um, you know, is the, is the offensive line going to be tough enough to kind of deal with, you know, what's going to be, you know, the noise at Husky stadium, you know, is Liam Ryan going to be able to, he's had a couple of good games, no penalties, right. But those are both at home. You know, is he going to be able to, uh, and both against you know, not very good defense. Yeah. And both against not very good defense. So is he, is he going to be able to, um, you know, be disciplined enough to, to take care of business the way he needs to. So I, I, I really think, and, and I know it's trite and, and I know that it's, it's sort of easy for, you know, me in my basement in front of my computer to say, but um, you know, they're just going to have to be tougher than they've been in a lot of games. And um, if they can do that, I think they, they stand a great chance if, if they don't. And more often than not in this matchup, they haven't, then they're going to get whipped again. And, you know, I've hoped that they can do it, but, you know, that's, that's where we start talking again about history where, you know, history says they, they don't, they kind of, they, you know, they, they get in that stadium and, and it gets loud and, and they start getting bullied a little bit and they pee down their legs. I, and I, and you know, I'm hoping it doesn't turn out that way, but you know. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and you, you and I have been in that stadium and I hate to say it for them, but like the place is, well, I mean, Autzen probably is loud, but that Autzen crowd didn't seem that like hyped. But the Apple Cup crowd is going to be hyped. Like they're going to be yeah. hyped to play us. Like that's, I mean, I do. I will say, I was there in 2015, and there was like almost no one in the student section, um, because it uh, it was Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> like, so, um, so that might help. But um, yeah, I I don't know. So if if they aren't if they aren't being bullied, and if they are able to move the ball like they should be able to. I think what's really going to be key is finishing drives. Um, you know, uh, yep. Gordon That's can't be he can't throw another goal line interception. Like, don't no. don't do that, man. No. Like, um, he, he can't. And we we got to finish drives, and and part of that might be running the ball a little bit in the in the red zone. UW's pretty good in the red zone. They're about uh, they're they're in the top twenty five and in uh, red zone touchdown rate allowed. Um, they're they're in the top. 35 ish and, and scoring opportunities touchdown rate wsu is very good score from scoring opportunities because they're they have a lot of like 30 30 to 40 yard touchdowns 25 to 40 yard touchdowns um so yeah like you know that's part of it too like can you score from 25 and just take that whole take that you know that cl enclosed space where uw is dropping seven guys in, into into your into your coverage just take that out of the equation by by, you know, making a big play from the 25. Um, I don't know. Like, it's it's so hard to envision a lot of these things because they yeah. just haven't happened against UW in right. so long. 
Right. Like we just haven't made plays against UW in so long with good offenses. We just yeah. haven't. I like I don't even have memories. Like I, I remember the touchdown that made it fifteen ten last year. You could barely even tell they scored a touchdown because the field was so white. Right. But like, that's that's the only memory I have of that game because it was the only touchdown we scored. But like it was, but but it's just like you just don't like have memories of WSU scoring on this on U Dub, like in in when it matters, and you don't have have you don't have memories of feeling tension in a game that much. So it's just like, it's so hard to wrap your head around. Like, yes, they should. Like I I wrote a line in my preview that said like, like if I didn't know the names of these teams, I would be like, this offense should move the ball on this defense. But I know the names of the teams. And so I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't know. Like this could be a total disaster. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. Like I want, (laughs) I want to have hope. I really, really want to have hope. And, and, I actually kind of do don't want can. to. Have hope. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I mean, it it can happen. I mean, I don't know. Should we, should we predict? <laughs> you know, it's like, I want to predict a win just because, because fuck the Huskies. But then yeah. I, we've predicted a lot of wins that have not, Come, but also we're two we're two in a row here. Yes, we are. So, but I have the same feeling I had with Cal when I predicted us to win. <laughs> I know. Well, the but, funny thing is, you know, Cal's got all the bullshit. This doesn't even need bullshit. This uh, is just... UW has never needed bullshit. They just <laughs> oh, can we? No, let's throw throw one more thing out there. Yeah, Aaron Fuller is a pretty damn good punt returner. Oh, goody! And I don't even know is Travell Harris going to play? So our yeah, X factor I, guy, I don't, I don't on even, the return game. Like, is yeah. he gonna play? I mean, who? I, I hope so. I mean, like I don't he know. didn't he, play the last quarter, like yeah, quarter, or last so. quarter and a half or so. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. He's the kind of guy who can make a difference, not not just in uh, special teams, but you know, I mean, he's he's a little different receiver. You know, he's yep. he's small, but he's strong. He's strong um, and sh- he's like a running back. He yeah, is. A, he was so, a running back. <laughs> like yep. he is a running back. Yep. Um, so you can, you know, he can maybe you know beat some guys and. You know, whatever. But again, you know, I'll, you know, I'll just say this. I mean, look, that secondary is not they don't have four pros back there or five pros back there the right. way they have. They they just don't. And when you watch them, like I watched them against Colorado and I'm just like, you know, you watch them against, say, LaVishka Chenault. Now, LaVishka Chenault really good, but it's like. You know, we've got guys who have, you know, the, those kinds of, you know, physical abilities, maybe not quite as fast, you know, maybe not quite as, you know, multi-talented. But, you know, I mean, we've got Des Patman, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, we've got a, a quick guy like Renard Bell. We've got, you know, I mean, uh, I don't think Calvin Jackson's going to play because he played in his fourth one uh, last weekend. And I know they want to redshirt him. So, you know, you, you're going to see some, some Roderick Fisher who is, you know, a physical specimen, you know, they're, they're, they're secondary guys. Their corners are smallish, you know, and they're not, they're not the kinds of guys that, um, you know, like you mentioned, Marcus Peters, I mean, they're just, they're not, not, not the, you know, I guess Marcus Peters got kicked off before his senior year, but anyway, you know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's not those guys. It, it's not, it's just not the same, kinds of guys back there that, that they've had. So uh, if anything gives me hope, it's sort of that again, they're good. They will try to bully us. They will try to own us. Um, they, they will um, I'm sure start off drawing on the arrogance that their defensive coordinator, you know, and, and, and look, you know, as much as I want to hate on Jimmy Lake, like everybody else. And I think he's a total prick or whatever. I, he's, he's not wrong. <laughs> you know, right. they've, they've kicked our asses. So they we have, every... we have no, we have no, we have no retort. Yeah, I mean they've earned every ounce of that arrogance. So, um, so you know they'll probably come out trying to feed off that arrogance, and and it'll really you know come down to does you know do our do our receivers and and does our line um, you know do they are they tough enough to hit back you know figuratively or maybe even literally? I mean I don't know you know I mean it whatever you gotta do, but um, you know they're gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna have to out tough them, and and I think this team has it in them to do that. I just you know, you just never know which one's going to show up. Yeah. And I, I, I do, you know, I like the arrogance from Borgie and, yes. and, and, and Gordon has that in him too. Yep. 
Um, I just, yeah, like the receivers are going to have to come out. The offensive line is going to have to fight. Like it's just, it's just going to be, and they're just going to have to be smart. And I, and I think because of what the defense is going, I think the defense is going to give up. Like the offense is going to have to be like fucking spectacular, like to win. And I think that we know they have that in them. Um, it's just like, like, do they have enough? Like, uh, like how many points do they actually need to score is, is the big question. I think it's in the thirties. All right. Do you want to, do you want to do that? Do that dirty thing? Yeah, let's right. go. Okay. So for all my negativity, let's go. Cause I just, I, I just, I can't do it. I just can't do it. So let's go 35, 34 WSU. Yeah. I can't do it either. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I can't, I just, I can't, I cannot, I cannot go on the record predicting a Husky win. It doesn't matter how much deep down in my soul. I know it's almost certain to happen. I'm just, you know, 35, 34. Let's go. Yeah. All right. So, um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, uh, 30, 31, 28 Cougs game winning field goal for Maza at the, at the horn. I like that. I like that. All right, man. Neither one of us would do that if we were putting our own money on it, but also, <laughs> but we're how, not, so it's okay. Like, okay, no, it'd be worse. No, it'd be worse if it was thirty twenty eight game winning miles at the horn. Because like, if we were attempting a field goal down to win at the end in an apple cup, like, would you die before the field goal happened? <laughs> I feel better since Mazza missed a field goal last weekend. Definitely feel better because because that would have been honestly. I was just that like, would have been he, guaranteed when he missed right? that one. I'm like, oh, thank God, but also please still win this game. But yeah. also, I'm kind of glad you missed that one. You I know, like, wasn't even Chuck bad Nelson, about it. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh man, but yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not looking forward to this, um, but no. I'll watch it. There, it's I so funny. Too. There's a watch party at a bar three blocks from my house. You're braver than I am because I no, will, but I, won't I go no, anywhere. but I'm 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 not going to that. Oh, okay, I was gonna say I will but, not. But go I do know that like, I might run into it. That I might run into huskies. But like, I do I, no, like there. There are probably huskies there, but it's gonna be like ninety percent cougar. It's a cougar watch still, party. I don't even care. But I, I don't even want. But the here's 10%. the thing. Like, oh yeah, exactly. Like, like when the Seahawks were in the Super Bowl and I lived in Vermont, I'm like, I'm not going to a bar to watch it because there might be a fucking Broncos fan there <laughs> like, and I'll be, and I'll want to kill them immediately. But yeah. it's not, this is a whole nother level with Husky fans. No, but I'm thinking, but I was like, God, like, you know, you have these visions in your head. Like if like, how cool to be if like, it's the fourth quarter and there's a couple minutes left and we know we're going to win. And I could just fucking run down to that bar where I know there's like 200 Cougs and I'm just going to like, that would be cool. Fucking buy shots of fireball and like, and so I would love for that to happen. Do that, Cougs. Um, e- that even if you great. just win at the buzzer and I can run down to the bar and do that because um, Amanda's working, but B's grandparents will be here so they can just watch B and I can run to the bar. Um, that bar allows kids, so I could even carry B there if I wanted to. But yeah, go ahead and do that, Cougs. I would love that moment. Um, I, it will be hard watching with uh, – with, um, uh, Amanda's brother and 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 dad because they 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 want the, the kooks to win but not at no one's not at, quite I, as invested and and I know because when I'm in the stadium and the people around me and and the way I react to things versus the way other people react to things <laughs> um, that I might get a little more intense about stuff um, so I always have to dial yeah. it back but I will say. I I watched the 20, 2007 Apple Cup with Amanda's dad and her and brother, and that 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 was in uh, in Seattle, and that turned yep. out pretty fucking great. Yeah, I was and at so, that game. Yeah, well, ooh. yeah, but I you know why I didn't go to the game because I had a friend's wedding that got married two cougs on Not that a very day. Good friend. Yeah, we I the first half of the game we listened to <laughs> on a radio in the pews. And then I left and didn't go to the reception. That's, and that's, I uh, yeah. went back to Amanda's parents' they house. They deserve that. And uh, luckily it was near Amanda's parents' house. And I went back there and I watched the second half. And we won. <laughs> and I, I think that's when uh, Amanda and I have been dating for that long. Although her parents had, since we went to high school and stuff together, they knew who I was. But I, that was the first time her dad saw me full on 
like watching an apple cup and like and all that nervousness and all that so but uh last year i had to watch it in australia um, rough i know but i was at my friend's house in melbourne in australia and i watched it um as they were preparing for their nine-year-old's birthday party i was blowing up balloons and just fill their idea was to fill up the living room with balloons so the living room i was watching the game in like so i'm just feeling so there's just these balloons all around me his 11 year old daughter is like coming in she's like what is happening right now like she's asking me things i think she could tell as i was getting more and more stressed even though i was trying to hide it she kind of didn't come around as much but like it was literally like as soon as it ended like 15 nine-year-olds came in the front door and then like i had to help they're like you're you have to help <laughs> like, like you're here you're staying at our house like you have to help and like so all <laughs> these kids running around like banshees and i'm like well fuck the apple cup it's done it's flushed and i am gonna go to a nine-year-old's birthday party now there you go i don't have that this year uh. um <laughs> I know. Well, it could be worse. You could be the guy who writes the recap every year. Yeah. Yeah. Have fun, Jeff. <laughs> it was worse when I used to go to my dad's house. So my dad. Can we I, make I one of I... the, can we make one of the other guys write it? Yeah, I know. Nick can or... I get Sherwood to do it again? Cause that was awesome last weekend. Yeah. That was oh, so much better than anything I could have written. Oh, a Sherwood Coogs got their ass kicked. Apple cap recap would oh. be. We got to do that one of these years. Well, can we just not get our ass kicked out? Yeah, that'd be cool, too. I'd be okay uh, with that But, too. yeah, but uh, yeah, that would be fun. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why you to do that, you crazy man. <laughs> I, I read you know, the previews. It was worse, it was I read worse the when I used to go to my dad's house to watch oh, the game. I was so mad um, the other day when you, you had me uh, do the, the, uh, the recap for the basketball game, and the Cougs just got whooped, and I was – this i don't want to write this because i used to write all the recaps back in the day when the kooks were bad yeah so like i wrote i've written a ton of shitty recaps oh yeah like when the kooks are bad at football obviously we've always been bad yeah but uh but yeah like we've gotten soft man that's what it is yeah i just we used to be so good at that we had a million different ways to write about horrible sports i know i just i don't have it in me anymore i'm old i got a kid i don't have any creative juice anymore we're just we're just soft Let's uh before we go, um, let's talk about a team that might win and do something awesome. Yeah, so the uh the women's soccer team, well, obviously, the, we'll just say the soccer team. We only have one. Uh, right. The the WSU soccer team is traveling to South Carolina to face the Gamecocks, um, in the Elite Eight of the NCAA tournament, uh, with a trip to the Final Four on the line. Yeah. Um, or the, uh, what do they call it? The, the college cup. college cup on the line, which is pretty damn cool. Um, we talked about Super them last cool. podcast. Uh, they're a really fun team to watch. They move the ball around up and down. Um, you can watch. So it's actually the apple cups going shitty. It's at three o'clock on Friday is when the game is, um, I'd say split, you know, double screen it. You have that apple cup on your TV and then on your computer streaming on, uh, probably, watch espn yeah, yeah yeah that's what it is um or espn plus or you know not espn plus you don't have to have plus but uh, uh watch espn or espn app on your phone um go ahead and uh, um you know uh put those kook the the kook soccer on um and you might get to watch a, a wsu team go to a final four which has never happened since we've had these expanded brackets so um it's a pretty big deal um, we definitely have a team that can do it. Uh, we have a stud player, Morgan Weaver, who I'm excited to watch. She's just been balling out. Yep. Um, it's her senior year and I think she just wants to take this as far as it'll go. I don't know anything about South Carolina and I'm hundred percent sure that you don't either, Jeff. So I, I know that they don't allow many goals, but I think that's true of most of the teams so, that are left at this point in the tournament. So, so. Virginia, you remember you had cited this, they had been yep. given up eight goals all year and yep. WC scored three goals on yep. them. So Yeah. So we're coming for you. So we cocks. don't fucking care. We're coming for the cocks. We're gonna we're gonna 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 circumcise those cocks. 
This is an explicit <laughs> rating, right? Wait. <laughs> but wait a second. <laughs> it's a women's soccer game, Craig. Hey, whatever, man. <laughs> hey, what are you being? You being? You being sexist? I, 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 yeah, I have no comeback to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but yeah, you know it's. <laughs> If the Apple Cup is shitty in the second That's half, right. you got you something to turn on at 3 o'clock. If the Apple Cup is good, you got two good things to watch. That's right. So, yep. yeah, like hopefully we have double things to celebrate next podcast. Yep. Hopefully we at least have one thing to celebrate. I hope so, man. God. My life would be like 110% better with an Apple Cup win. Yeah. Like yeah, I just like I. I mean, I mean, are we both in agreement that we'd rather have the Apple Cup win? <laughs> that is tough. <laughs> it is tough. I, I, I know, and we're we're both big soccer fans. Yeah, and that's something that's that tough. like it's such a well. Actually, I don't know. We we never. But I don't went... get to go to work on Monday. And be like our soccer teams in the College Cup. Like yeah. I, you know. Instead, it's you know I get I walk in like in you literally. Co- I remember that you don't tell anyone that the soccer team won. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I will walk into my, if we lose the Apple cup, I will walk into my classroom and on my whiteboard will be the score. Yeah. Large. It'll be, and it'll be written in about 13 other places in my classroom because that's just how Huskies roll. And well, that's like, how, I mean, you're going to do that too. If the Cougs win, right? maybe i don't know like i i typically don't because i hate it so much when it's done to me that's fair because it happens to you way more often (laughs) i am i am the person who like never did like never pranked anybody ever because i'm like i didn't want to get pranked you know i'm like i'm like i just am not gonna do the thing that i don't want people to do to me and of course that never actually stops them from doing doing it to me but but this is is a pointless question um i want them both to win yeah and 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 they're both uh, gonna win and they're both Gonna win. That's right. They're both gonna win. Never mind everything else that we talked about. Even if they win, I'm still never going back to that fucking stadium. Oh no, no, I'll never go back. They that they're assholes, and they charge too much, and they stick you up in the top ten rows of the stadium in four different corners. It's horrible. Like it's, yeah. Fuck like with guys. like, you have your season tickets and three hundred level. You know when you get over to like in the, of the Seahawks. You know when you get over to like the end zone, three hundred mm-hmm. level, like it's a bunch of dickheads over there. Yes, and and it's I've, the worst of the worst. Yeah, and and that is what is at the top of Husky Stadium. Yeah, and uh, my my experience in twenty fifteen, which is the first time I had been there since they did all like they redid it and they put the visiting fans and spread them out. It was just awful. And yep, and I, I it's I, not fun. No, like it's that's not the fun. thing. Like like if I'm gonna go to a game, I want to enjoy it. Even if I'm going to, you know, my team loses or whatever, like, like I want to be able to enjoy it and, and it's not fun and they're not fun. And, you know, I almost got in a fight in 2015. I mean, we were, that was, you know, we both went, we were on opposite sides of the stadium. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I almost got in a fight with a guy cause he was, you know, being such an asshole while yep. I was leaving the stadium and I was yep, just I like, the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not really a getting a fight kind of guy. Like I, I just, you know, anyway, just, wow. you know, it was just whatever. So screw them and they'll never see another penny from me. And just, it'd be so nice to dance on that W in the middle of the stadium, which you can't even do because they put us up in the third. God, the, well, the, the team, the team, the players, the team. let the yes. players do it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, let's let's do that, man. Let's please, please. Yes. And Gordo, uh, dial it dial it back like two notches because I know you're going to be amped. Yeah, don't not like Cal when he came out against Cal again. Yeah, like at his hometown and and yep. was just like heaving everything. Uh, we don't want that. Um, no. Just to learn no from picks. that experience. Learn from that experience, and just. Uh, Move the ball down the field. Yep. Own these guys. You can do it. Like your offense is better than their defense. Just don't throw a pick in the first quarter. Oh. He's gonna throw a pick. Just don't let it be early. I know he's throwing. And he, don't the, let it be like a pick six or something. It's ridiculous. it's been since Arizona State that he hasn't thrown one, so it's pretty much guaranteed. Yeah, but he's going to because he's gonna he's gonna make an aggressive throw at some point. It's fine. Like like I honestly, I don't. It's a like, trade off. 
Yeah. I mean, if he's going to also throw five touchdowns and great, I don't have a problem with it, you know, but just please don't let it be early and please don't let it be backbreaking. That's all I ask. Yep. All I ask is that they put two tight ends in, run the ball 40 <laughs> two times. Two running backs. I mean, two we haven't seen backs. Clay Markoff in a while. I know they've been saving him. They've been saving him for the Apple Cup. For he, He's he's going to be like that Jed Collins right. uh, tight end slash fullback guy. Cassidy Woods. Yep. We're just... Time, time for him to play. Yep. Time for Cassidy Woods to get in there. I, I just can't wait to see it. Um, it's going to be gonna, great. It's going to be awesome. Wishbone. Here we Wish, go. Wishbone time. All right. This is the longest preview podcast we've ever yes, done. Yes, it is. Because <laughs> we're right, very Craig. angsty. This is the angstiest I know. podcast. That's, we're, we're, we're nervous. That's why we're still talking. I know. It's rambling. All right, man. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. <laughs>